<laughs> we, we, you're live as you we, break your. Uh, we were really lit from overhead in this room. Yeah, <laughs> Got that, you got Crow Magnum brow there. Okay, welcome to the the Mark and Gwen show, <laughs> starring Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwen Vaughn here at the Auburn Medical Group. Yep. Many of you are followers, especially those who are watching live as we're actually doing this, because you get the little notifications because you tapped on the bell icon when you subscribe to our channel. And yes, Faith, we do see you, and we hey. welcome your your greetings. Hey, we want to tell you guys about something that just right now is coming out in the news. So if you go to your news feed. Under health, you will see the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association are telling us to use different criteria to diagnose hypertension than we have for 14 years. The last 14 years. Crazy. So up until now, it's been uh, 140 for the systolic number is considered hypertension, or 90 for the diastolic number is considered hypertension. Yeah. And this is brand new stuff. You just now found this out. Yeah, uh, just came into my feed just now. And they have to say, so it was today that it was announced. So this is brand new. Just, just announced. And, and the significance of this is uh, astounding considering how much of our job already is putting people Trolling on blood, blood pressure, pressure pills. pills. Yeah. Yeah, my goodness. Um, and it's going to, yeah, it makes our job much harder. <laughs> The, and it's not so much the treatment. I mean, we can treat and get blood pressure down. It's convincing people that they need treatment. That's, that's, it is. That's probably the biggest Continually, difficulty. Continually, uh, this is what my day is composed of. People coming in, they have a high blood pressure reading, and them telling me why it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's only like this when I'm in the doctor's office. Only like this when I'm in the doctor's office. I hear that almost every My time. machine at home never shows us. Other doctor's offices don't have me have high numbers. Right. Um, and, and, of course, why, why is that, doctor? I mean, why is it that the specialists don't see high blood pressure when they check patients? Well, they Are you laughing at somebody's comment? No, no. Oh. I was just saying they don't check it as often as we do, so I don't know if they just don't see it as much. I don't it, know. It's not their thing. Yeah, so... And so if they get a high number, that, that creates a situation where they're not real happy. I mean, what do I do? I'm... I'm they an ophthalmologist. To, I'm a dermatologist. What what do I do with this high number? Well, yeah. yeah, they send it back to us if it's actually real. But uh, I'd say pay attention how the blood pressure is taken in in that specialist office who's getting is a different it with number. A wrist cuff. Oh, gee, please no. <laughs> Some uh, of them do that. <laughs> it does happen. We're yeah, we're not yeah. going to put it past them. Uh, yeah, their their job is not treating high blood pressure, so they don't necessarily have the interest or the, or the care to really track down blood pressure. And I'm okay with that. And hi, Brio from England, and we do see that you're coming. Yeah. By the way, those of you watching this after the fact, the reason we're talking to people uh, that you don't see the comments from is because this is a live broadcast as we're recording, and we're actually interacting with people who are uh, writing in on the comments. And, uh, and by the way, Super Chat's always available to you guys who aren't on iOS. <laughs> yeah, the... So, yeah, the specialists or that home readings. Um, yeah, well, even now us, with this new number, up, maybe a lot of those oh home readings uh, will fall into this category. And, um, yeah. Wow. Because we were just shooting to get it under. So, well, let's go over those old guidelines, I guess. Old so, guidelines. so they said perfect or normal was 120 over 80. Uh, Pre-hypertension was 120 to 139. I'm oh, sorry, 121 to 140. Uh, yep. Right, yeah, over uh, 81 to 90, yeah. Uh, <laughs> getting off by one here. I don't know if it's the number over. Or right. Not. So that's pre-hypertension, and then it was considered hypertension 140 over 90 or higher. So um, that was the previous guidelines, and then they have different stages. So now they brought that 140 over 90 down to 130 over 80. And uh, it's not so much that they brought it down, but they brought down the diastolic by 10 points too. Yeah. And diastolic does not move that much. That's one yeah. that is going to be difficult to uh, take. And I've got a call. I'm on You've call. got a call. So I'll okay. take that. Oh, you you're on call. So you take that. I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking. If, if this keeps going, maybe you'll join us again. Yep. So Dr. Gwen's going to take a call because Hello. he is on call. Let me see if I can fix my little tripod here and talk to you guys a little bit more about this, this new development of this high blood pressure criteria, diagnosis criteria, it, it's a little disturbing to us because we do have to convince people to do what it takes to get their blood pressure down. And, you know, we'll have people, will do the readings at home, and then they'll come into the office, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll see that the numbers are such and such, we'll get a high number in the office. And 
there, there's this strange thing that goes on, and people use the term uh, white coat hypertension to describe it, um, and it's an unfortunate term that, e that it even exists because it gives the impression that this reading in the doctor's office somehow does not mean that you're at risk for all of the complications of high blood pressure, stroke and heart attack and damage to the kidneys and the vision. Yes, you are. This is a real number. The doctor's office getting an accurate number on our machines here that are calibrated is not something to be ignored. That really is the pressure. The damage is real. Uh, when people are having these numbers taken in the doctor's office that are high. And yeah, sure you get readings outside of the doctor's office that aren't high for whatever reason. And yeah, we think maybe it's a little bit of anxiety or nerves that maybe it's a little bit higher here. Or if it really is, that's the other question we have, is it really higher here than other situations? And it's not. When you're driving on Highway 49, when you're seeing, talking to your accountant on the phone or trying to get the alimony out of your ex-spouse, you know, these are situations where people's blood pressure is not being checked to see what it's running. And I can tell you, most of the time, it's probably going to be higher than what we're getting here. So don't let having a lower blood pressure outside of the doctor's office be reason to think that for some reason it's not real or not injurious to your body when it is high in the doctor's office being measured by people that all they do all day long and what they've trained for for decades is tr is checking blood pressure and, and treating for it. So we need to first try to use non-medical means to get the blood pressure down, and that would be the DASH interventions, D-A-S-H, Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. I've referred to it in many videos, and all you have to do is search on our YouTube channel see us talking about it quite a bit. Uh, in, if you go to the NIH website, NIH, National Institutes of Health, to their government website and look up DASH, you can get lots of good information about doing these things. And apparently, what did we say, 46% of yeah. Americans are going to be wanting to do this. Here, you want to join oh, yeah. us here? Or you can catch a link to the DASH diet at drgreenlight.com. Uh, That's right. Hypertension and, and we'll have to put a, a link in the description of this video for after the fact so you can go yeah, to see drgreenlight.com. Great information in there, but not. Great, great information from drgreenknight.com about hypertension. It was one of the... Say, I like burgers. You, you, I like, like burgers. burgers. That's what the person said. They like burgers yes. too much. And it used to be easy for me to um, not be as strict recommending the DASH diet before I did it myself. Now that I'm living that way myself, I'm all the more wanting people to do it. I was talking to a patient today about how I changed the way I eat and how it's almost as if I'm trying to do it on behalf of my patients. I don't have hypertension, I don't have high uh, blood sugar, but I'm doing it and, and there's a component of my own diet that's out of frustration for the patients who aren't doing it. And yeah. you know, it's not bringing their blood pressure down. <laughs> you, yeah. My yeah. eating this way is not bringing their it's blood not, pressure down. You can't do it through other people. Uh, so join me in following the DASH eating plan and not needing to have treatment for blood pressure. I actually have to think now uh, to my last blood pressure reading, if I am hypertensive at this 130 over 80, and boy, I'm gonna. Uh, um, I'm my trying last to think. one was 120 something, but I don't know about the low number. I don't remember that one. Yeah, well, yeah. so I, be over 80. I don't there's going to be an awful lot of blood pressure taking going on both here and across the country yeah. in light of this. Yeah, this is this is huge motivation for me to keep going with the dietary changes I've made, and and to even uh, be a little more strict on the sodium. So you want to join us, Christina? You want to be on the on the video? I just want to check if there's any urgent calls or messages not from me. before we check out. No, so, I, yeah, I'm but of course I'm not checking mine until later. So <laughs> as long as there's nothing pending. Sorry to interrupt the, okay, the show yeah. with that there. So uh, yeah, let's let's look back at comments that we've had. We've got always nearly right saying I like burgers too much. Frank uh, Savikas says most doctors just prescribe meds for BP and nothing more. We start with the DASH diet. That is the easy the way. The DASH eating plan. The, unfortunately, a lot of people won't adhere to the proper diet and exercise. And yeah, then medications become necessary. But yeah. a lot of people, if you are strict with it, and stick to that DASH diet and get your 150 minutes of exercise, moderate cardiovascular exercise daily. Weekly. You're gonna, weekly. Sorry, daily. Weekly. Uh, you're going to do a pretty good job of bringing it down. And we may yes. be able to avoid those medications. So, yeah, this, this is not... This is not a ridiculous thing on behalf of the medical pharmaceutical industry monster. 
this is a product of how we eat as Americans. And those of you who are watching other countries, if you're eating like Americans, it's happening to you too. It's not us. It's the diet we've been inheriting from this culture that we've been in that has not known what it was doing when it said eat your meat and potatoes, your red meat and, and your simple carbohydrates. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know that these were the effects. We're learning it now, and we are here to help you reverse this and to make a new start. <laughs> I'm not going to say it on this. <laughs> Other words of wisdom from Dr. Glenn. Okay. Um, oh, you know. I was, was going to see what get caught up with what our live people are. You, I, yeah, Here's I'm, somebody who had 138 or 84. Is that too high? Yes, it that would now. be over 130. That's the, that would be over the 80. exact person who would be have high blood pressure now that wouldn't before. Brio, you're the one that's falling into this. So Sorry. here's what we want to do. We want to have you come back to the office. That's what your reading is. Have you check it outside of the office uh, maybe three times a week for a couple weeks or more. Come back in the office, recheck it, check it on both arms. And if we're not getting readings with rechecking it down below that 130 for systolic or below the 80 for diastolic, we're going to say change something whether it be exercise or diet or starting a medicine, yep. we're, we're going to do what it takes to get that blood pressure down because we're finding that that makes a difference in people's risk for cardiovascular disease and stroke. And it's going to help us all the more to meet our criteria <laughs> for our center. Yeah, um, our, our insurance has a certain criteria that we're some, our insurance, our uh, HMO. That HMO we're, that we're a part of uh, has these, these marks these we're supposed goals. to be hitting, and it's been hard to hit them already. These goals will help it be easier to hit their goal. Of course, yeah. they'll probably adjust it to match. Yeah, they, they probably will, <laughs> which will make us all the more. <laughs> it's probably that's for everybody, in. I guess. Okay, I blame America for KFC and McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, okay. Last time yeah, I checked, it was 137 over 110. Oh, 110, my goodness. wow. That's an awful small pulse pressure, though. Yeah. So, yeah, Weird. go check it again. That doesn't sound right. Uh, so it's 118 to 119 over 80, normal still. You know what? We want to get that 80. 80 is apparently borderline. We want to get down a point. Get it down. Check it yeah. again. Sit down. Relax for a while. Take a few breaths. Have somebody else check it. All you have to do is get that 80 down a little bit, and, yeah. and you can. You, you, if it's right on the 80, you're probably going to be able to get it down, and then you can say, okay, I'm good. Yeah, and that's the weird part. speaking of which... I'm going to be a lot more lenient on these people that are getting the 80s right. than I was with the 90s. <laughs> okay. I uh, so if you came in with 90, I said, oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go up on your medicine because you can't get that 90 down. It is 80. It, if I you're mean, getting 80, it's one of those words like almost like I'm like, did I read that right? Before? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, and That's so, C Wonder Fire says, why the new guidelines? Kind of ridiculous. Is it ridiculous, Dr. Wayne? Um, not completely. Um, it, it's uh, ridiculous isn't the right word because this is if we do meet these guidelines we are going to reduce heart disease and stroke and all of that uh, okay we are going to have better so, numbers so if so. you think avoiding heart attack and stroke is ridiculous then yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then these absolutely um, that's that's exactly what it comes yeah. down to Brio okay thanks uh, send flight pay from England to you <laughs> yeah or, or you pay us to go to England Hey, and, and there we go. Practice medicine without being licensed in England. Ah, uh, maybe uh, that, that would probably wouldn't be good. Pay for our license in yeah. England too. That, <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then see wonder file. Uh, oh no, you you already read that one. Backing up a little bit on your comments, we find somebody with with the caps lock stuck on their computer. Look at that. Uh, that would yelling be at us. Millie yelling through text. <laughs> Doctor, Jeez. can you please add a link to the. The dad. 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 We, we, yeah, we, we are there, but it's so hard to find it. Uh, search for NIH DASH. That'll or work go better to than drgreennight.com and look up his hypertension order. Drgreennight.com. <laughs> All right. Linda says, I'm on blood pressure meds, but mine is always low. My sometimes it's scared. Scare it? Do you get it's lightheaded scared. or uh, faint? I mean, as long, if your yeah. blood pressure is low and you're not symptomatic, really not much to worry about. If you're getting lightheaded and your blood pressure is low, yeah, yep. probably too yep. low. Yep. Um, no, now, before we finish with that discussion, though, I would say if, if somebody just increased their medicine and when they first get up from sitting, there's a little, yeah. you know, they just have to pause for a second, that usually goes away within the first couple of weeks and then you're good. Yes. Okay, there was another comment. Uh, looks like you have to give up everything to keep your blood pressure down. It seems that... Going live. Here we go. <laughs> no.
It seems that way when you're not eating correctly. Uh, that you, do you don't have, have to, to give up fruits or vegetables. You don't have to give up fruits or vegetables. You don't have to give up dates. You don't have to give up seeds and nuts and berries. Legumes, beans. Legumes. Uh, what else? Whole, whole, whole wheat grains. You do need to give up whole fast grains. food. But yeah, fast food. Uh, sea Wonder Fire, I believe it went from 32% to 47% affected. That's about 15% hike. That's just crazy. It does get our attention. Yeah. yeah, it's going to impact uh, a lot of stuff here. So Linda says, sometime or most often low. I am on blood pressure meds. Last time at the ER, it read 90 over 48. That did not seem to bother them. You know what? No low number bothers me. Yeah, if you're it's not, not a number that bothers me. It's symptoms that bother well, me. High numbers bother me because I know what they're leading there, to. There are some low numbers that would start to bother me. <laughs> if the person's walking around, they feel absolutely fine? Uh, yes, because then they would be at risk of the smallest thing, like being coming dehydrated and then just and then they're passing down. out. So, I, so I like somebody's that. down at 80 over 50. Uh, yeah, 70 or something. I mean, whew. You're probably going to be symptomatic, but if you're walking around even like that, it, it takes up very little for you to become lightheaded or dizzy. So, anyway. <laughs> Millie unsub because of our, our, our way of addressing uh, the caps, although I won't read exactly how that was said. See ya, Millie. <laughs> Sorry, Millie. Millie, it's a comedy show. Hey. What? She, didn't, she didn't yell at us during that. That was actually oh, she pretty, was very she in control. She very nice yeah. that time. As she's using inappropriate <laughs> language. See Wonder File. My, my bow, my boo, always goes higher. No, not your boo. <laughs> your blood pressure. Always goes higher in the doctor's oh. office. Coincidence? I think not. My bae. Yet my bay. Where are my bays <laughs> at? As Miranda would sing. Okay, Rusty says, AFib changes the acceptable numbers? Question mark. Uh, no. no, it doesn't. No, but it does bring in a whole different issue of how we treat it because yeah. medicines used to treat AFib can impact blood pressure, so yeah, that has to be balanced. Yeah, see, Wonder Fire is getting the, the numbers <laughs> right or the the letters correct. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Dr. Gwen, for bringing this to our attention, allowing yeah. us to get this information yeah. out there in a timely manner for people who are wanting to see a discussion on the new blood pressure criteria, knowing how it's going to affect them and primary care doctors. Yeah, it's going to affect all of us. So um, you know where to go for up-to-date information and for good medical stuff. Go to drgreennight.com and be sure well, to be Now I need to go update that post because that's at 140 over 90. So Put a little yeah, yeah, update on it. Done, yeah, and then also be sure to subscribe to our medical group and mark the little bell icon so you can get updates like this as they happen. Until next time, Dr. Wingbon and Dr. Mark Von telling you to stay in good health with a good blood pressure.